All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we got the one, the only, the ever so talented Fusion right here, right now on the line. How are you doing this evening? What's going on, BJ Mortal? What's going on, Outlaw Radio FM? What up, what up? Hey, man, I got to say, we're doing good down here in Canada, man. I hope everything's all good with you out on your end, man. You know, 2020 is not treating us nicely. Yeah, it definitely is throwing us all over the place, man. Now, all we could do is keep keep the strength of music very, very big, you know what I mean? And and let's let's keep praying, praying hard, man, you know what I mean? Only and person that can help us out is God, the only person, man. I most definitely agree, man. I, I think, honestly, if we survive 2020, you know, we can survive anything because this year has just been nothing but complete downs all year long. That That is an actual fact, man. I kind of feel like after this, we'll be a lot more stronger, we'll be a lot more knowledgeable, you know what I mean, on certain things, and... and you know, and, and take precautions as always, you know what I mean? That the, the, the health system is, 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 is a wild thing, man. But I got to take you back uh, to a simpler time, man. Back when, back when there was no COVID, you know, the world was a hell of a lot easier to live in, man. But I got to ask you, like, what actually made you decide to get into the music industry all those years ago? So, uh, to be honest, man, it just came randomly, you know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't really think it was going to be, like, something that was going to, like, linger on very long. I've been in the game for 14 years, you know what I mean, uh, ever since high school, my freshman year of high school, apparently banging on the banging on the table, making uh, the, the, you know how they're making beats when they're banging on the table? <laughs> so Hell yeah, man. Apparently, apparently that made me want to pursue it, and... and after that, man, it just it just became bigger than what it is now, man. And I love it, man. I, I love the hip hop culture. And when I mean the hip hop culture, I mean the old school hip hop culture. You know what I mean? So I'm very big on the old school. So. Oh man, back in the day when individuals actually like you know respected the elements of the hip hop culture, man. You know what I mean? Now it's like, right. unfortunately, there's all a whole bunch of skinny jean music nowadays, man. That's what I call yeah. it. I, I can't call it hip hop, man. I just call it skinny jean bubblegum rap. <laughs> I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, man. You know, I'm not, you know, I, I'm the type of person where it's like I listen to anything. You get what I mean? But it's like, you know, it's 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 like you know where you come from because me as an artist, it's like I try I try to like move toward that. You know, what I mean, the new stuff and all that. But man, I can't, man. You know, I know my roots. My roots are just straight old school, man, and and I keep it like that. You know what I mean? Hey, man, a lot of individuals really still do listen to uh, old school, uh, old school vibrations, man. So keep doing you, man, and whatever, whatever you feel is right. Yeah, no, facts, man. You know what I mean? And and I kind of feel like no matter what, man, you know, the old school hip hop will always live on. You can always listen to the classics from front to back and be like, this is this is dope. You know what I mean? And also, as aside from the music uh, side of things as well, man, you you also are a host of your own podcast called uh, Five Perspectives Podcast. I have to ask you, uh, can you tell us a bit more about that and what exactly do you do on the podcast and where can we check it out? Well, the Five Perspectives Podcast was something that uh, that just came up uh, not that long ago from, from, a, from a sleepless night from 3 in the morning all the way through, you know what I mean? Um, the idea just came in like out of nowhere because the thing is they call me, other than they call me Fusion, they call me the Wander and Brain. So the idea of the Five Perspectives Podcast was to uh, bring entrepreneurship to light to inspire others in the world. You get what I mean? So what I wanted to do was I wanted to get, like, entrepreneurs, like, who are doing anything, anybody from the music industry, anybody in the food business, you know what I mean, who are small businesses, I want to get their story on how they started and what message should they portray to people who are coming up as well. You get what I mean? So the Five Perspective Podcast is just five Five solid questions digging into the mind of entrepreneurship. I like that, man. It's catchy because, you know, a lot of individuals, they, they kind of make everything like a radio show. You know what I mean? So it's like all music, then an interview. But I think yours is one of a kind, man. That's really creative. I actually, I like that idea, man. Yeah, man. I, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it was it was always, and, and, you know, even with that, man, I don't know if you, you, you've seen it or whatever, but, you know, I started a vlog, you know what I mean? It's called The Wandering Brain. So the Wandering Brain blog that's on YouTube, it basically, you know, it, it, it gives a daily, it gives you the little daily life of, of a vlogger and stuff, but also it gives you pointers here and there on how I keep maintaining myself right from being a musician, from being a pro wrestler, from being a business owner, from being a podcaster, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it, it just goes on, you know what I mean? 
what I mean? So I try to inspire others with what I do. I, I, you know, I want that's what I want to do is keep inspiring others in the hip hop culture, keep inspiring people in the audio and the, the audio, um, the audio uh, production industry, sounding industry. You know what I mean? Because I'm also an audio production with mixing and mastering. So. And I got to say as well, you actually took uh, the video log actually right, right out of my mouth. That was exactly what I was going to bring up next, man. But I do want to encourage listeners, man, if you are listening, you are into the whole uh, vlog type stuff, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell. You you guys hear it enough on other YouTube videos. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, definitely, man. And I mean, like, it's easier. It's easier for everybody who wants to, find, who wants to get to my YouTube and everything else. It's easier to uh, locate me on Instagram at, at the Royal Fusion with two ends at the end. And I also noticed as well that you, like, as you mentioned a few moments ago, that you have actually done some professional wrestling. I have to ask you, uh, what what actually inspired you to get into wrestling? And, of course, what promotions did you wrestle for? Oh, man, yo. Wrestling, I'm going to tell you something, man. Wrestling, wrestling has always been part of my life. You know what I mean? Ever since the old school generation of Stone Cold versus The Rock, Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant, uh, you know what I mean? Like, things like that. It's just, it always been a part of my life. I didn't think I was going to get into pro wrestling, honestly. I really didn't think I was going to get into pro wrestling. So I ended up, uh, when I was in the podcasting business, I started off with an unsigned underground talent uh, podcast podcast that uh, you know introduced unsigned talent and underground talent from all around the world. So when I ended up building a branch, I ended up building a, 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 a branch for everybody else to also be able to start their podcast on, on, on a big branch, I ended up deciding to create a podcast for, uh, for wrestling, so a wrestling podcast. You know, we started talking about, you know, all the shows and so forth and all that. And after that um, podcast, I just jumped right into pro wrestling, man. And the first day I started, I didn't think I was going to survive after that because the first day, I thought it was just easy, but let me just tell you, man, it, pro wrestling is not easy, bro. They, you're, work, you're working out bones that you never heard about, ever, 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 and then you start feeling pain that you never felt before, you know? So, sadly, I had to retire at the beginning of this year due to uh, personal health issues, but um, no matter what, I always carry wrestling in my heart, man. And I'm going to be honest with you, man, I know exactly how you feel. My, my listeners probably don't, probably don't know this about me, but back when I was... Uh, 18, man. I actually, uh, I actually was trained uh, to be a professional wrestler, man. And you know what? I did about three matches, like in the in the, in the independent circuit, in a local, like a local underground, getting paid twenty dollars. And uh, after about three shows, man, I got into an accident where I fractured my skull, so I couldn't do it anymore. But I have to say, uh. I always thought before, I, just as a fan, that oh, wrestling is fake. No, no, man. I got hit with that steel chair, bro, and I literally was out. I was like, what the just happened. Uh, and, and you know, it's funny is that as, it's funny that you say that too, man. Because when I when I first started training and stuff, I was saying the same thing. But then in time, you know, I started doing that. And in my first debut, I, I debuted for a wrestling company in New Jersey called uh, Ace Wrestling. And Ace Wrestling, uh, <laughs> we had I had a battle royale that they wanted me to the uh, the debut in. So they made me number two. Of coming out in the Battle Royal, bro, forget about it, man. I, I made a mistake. I made a mistake turning around at the wrong time when the guy was coming at me and his elbow hit my nose and all this blood started coming out. All this blood started coming out. And I would have been very mad if he would have threw me out. Because if he would have threw me out, Right then and there, I would have never got the, the exposure that I got. But I got the exposure because of that bloody nose, man. And and when I was bleeding, I didn't know what to do. But at that point, I said, man, you know, whatever. I'm fired up. Let's keep going. You know what I mean? And before we get off the wrestling type of things, man, because I'm a huge fan myself. I can go on for hours, but my listeners probably don't want that. So I got to ask you, man, what is one of your favorite wrestlers of all time, man? Oh, I know you probably do not want to hear this, man, but... <laughs> Hey, as long as it's not John Cena, I'm okay. I was about to say that. Nah, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, nah, man, I'm a big, I'm a big Eddie Guerrero fan. I'm a big Chris Benoit fan. You know what I mean? I, I know that's kind of like a little too explicit. 
Hey man, oh. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be 100% honest, and I'm prob I'm probably gonna get some whiplash from the wrestling fans. But for one, I love Eddie Guerrero. Was my idol growing up. I cried like a baby when he died. And as for Chris Benoit, I really can. I, I'm gonna be honest. Two things. I think he's either. I think he's innocent. I really think he was framed because realistically, who is gonna hang themselves from a weight bench with a towel wrapped around their neck? It's common sense. Who who does that? If you're gonna take your yeah. life, you're just gonna take your life. And that's how that's how I feel the same way. That's the reason why. Like regardless, man. You know, you gotta think, man. Chris Benoit. He. The, it, the, just his, the way he carries himself, man. A technical wrestler like that can go a long way. So think about how much he would have been uh, making it right now if he was still alive. You know what I mean? Even Eddie Guerrero, you know what I mean? If he was still alive, how good they would be nowadays. You know what I mean? And, of course, I know, you know, people get too old and, you know, it becomes a whole situation. But uh, I think uh, I, 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 I thank them for wrestling, man. You know what I mean? Eddie Guerrero is one of the, one of the, one of the best. Uh, high flyers, the best, uh, the best technical wrestlers I've, I've ever seen. You know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, I love the new generation. I do, but I kind of feel like storytelling got a little degraded from back in the day. Remember how storytelling was a lot way more different. You know what I mean? A lot more uh, grimier too. I remember the whole bedtime story to Dominic between uh, Eddie Ray and uh, Little Dominic back in the yeah. day. Exactly. So now it's like it's not more about that. And don't get me wrong, I still respect the wrestling business regardless. But I feel like it, it, it degraded a lot of the storytelling stuff, man. And, you know, with even with The Undertaker retiring at that Survivor Series 30 years in the wrestling industry, man, uh, that, that Connie actually hurt me as well. You know what I mean? And one, one thing, one last thing I got to ask you, and I'm telling my listeners it's the last wrestling thing I got here, but. What's your take on AEW? Because I want to ask an actual professional wrestler, what do they think of AEW, this new promotion? I, I for what I think about AEW, I feel like AEW is the future. You know what I mean? I feel like with the, the way they're uh, pushing themselves and the way they're giving chances to a lot of uh, a lot of wrestlers, they're giving chance to a lot of wrestlers, people who have not been seen before. They're giving them opportunity, and that's something that a business is supposed to give is opportunity to people who are coming up. Not destroy them. You know what I mean. So even with a lot of these uh, wrestling promotion companies that I wrestle for, you know what I mean. I've done everything I can to make things happen. You know, from single matches, tag team matches, uh, uh, from battle royals, from hardcore matches. You know what I mean. I did everything I can, but it's like the industry is filled with people who don't want people to go over them. You know what I mean. And I understand they need to protect themselves, but the situation is more about uh, uh, helping the other people helping the other person develop himself, get himself up. And I think that's what AEW is doing. I think AEW is helping each and every independent wrestler get where they need to be. And if and if they don't if they're not shown on T V, at least they're shown somewhere so that way they can be able to get out. You know, and and by the way, what hit me a lot too, man, was yesterday when Sting and uh entered the the, the, the arena. So I'm going to be honest, man. My wife told me about, about that incident. I was actually live on the air, man, and she sent me a message to my Facebook, and in my head I was like, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I was when I, when I came from work, man. I seen, the, I seen a post that Sting is all elite. I'm like, what? <laughs> Yo, man. And I'm, I'm just sitting back. I'm like, you know what? Work comes first, but come on. That's history. Man, man. I mean, it's... It, it, it's definitely, I kind of feel like AEW is definitely the future, man, and I, and I love the way they're running stuff. I hope, hopefully they keep it the same way. Hopefully they move strong. But think about this, man. Wrestling is all about, uh, a lot of people who are in tune of too much of, you know, man, WWE is better, AEW is better. Listen, man, be happy that we got a lot of wrestling, man. You know what I mean? Be happy that we got so much wrestling to watch nowadays. That's the, that's the, the, the very important. I'm going to be honest, man. I really do think AEW is a future as well, but they, they, I, what I think they should do is actually take a look back at the WCW and, and, and do not do any stupid matches like scaffold, like grandma on a scaffold match and stuff like that. That was just... Or forklift, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was just some bullshit. I just kind of feel like they're just trying things out to see where, where the fan base is going. I mean, think about it. It's better to try than not try. You get what I mean? So it's like, who... who if they were to, to, to start something a little different, like a match, a little different match or so forth, it kind of like, the idea has to try to go and flow, you know what I mean? So you have to start it first, see where it goes. If it doesn't go, don't do it again. You know what I mean? That's just how it works. I 
mean, everything's a learning process. That's how I feel like on it. But other than that, I do feel like they still need to work on a lot of uh, different matches, a lot of different uh, outcomes on different matches. Because, you know, I kind of see, like, the repetitive move over and over. But hopefully they change that, you know what I mean? And also, back to your uh, uh, hip-hop uh, type of things, you also recorded a freestyle for Project Born's uh, Fuck With Me track. I have to ask you, can you tell us a bit more about that freestyle, man, and what was it like actually working with Project Born out of Flint, Michigan? Um, Man, Project Born, man. Project Born, uh, I, I love them guys, man. Yo, uh, the, first, the first time I did that Fuck With Me um, record, I ended up... Uh, <laughs> I ended up just remixing it. It wasn't like just an actual like rap or whatever. Like, I, like I actually did a feature with them. I just remixed that through a verse on there and then I just threw their verses and everything else. Project Born hit me up. Uh, somebody, I think some one of my uh, Juggalo homies ended up uh, tagging Project Born saying that I did a track with them. Project Born hit me up and then I'm sitting here thinking, damn, they about to get at me. But apparently I, I spoke to... Uh, I spoke to one of the members of Project Born, and we were, man, we, we, we definitely, like, just vibed it out. He was like, bro, if you were whack, I would have been like, yo, take it off. But, bro, you are not whack. You're legit, bro. You're dope as hell. Let's make a track together. And then after that, we just made uh, the, the track Survival, which is, on, uh, which is on my Spotify, my SoundCloud, and everything else. We made the track Survival, and it was phenomenal, man. And I appreciate them definitely for, for taking the time to give me a feature and uh, we always showing love, man. I'm always, I'm always in contact with them. You know what I mean? Making sure everything's good, bro. And also, you have your own record label as well, by the name of Speak Your Mind Records. I have to ask you, to, I have to ask you, how did that come to be for you? And of course, what services do you do, do you provide to the general public? So when it, when uh, Speak Your Mind Records came out uh, not that long ago, what happened was uh, I used to have a radio station. I used to have a radio station business by the name of Speak Your Mind Radio. And um, Speak Your Mind Radio, the way it's spelled is YA, where Speak Your Mind Radio, because uh, I, I, I wanted to use like a slang word instead of just keeping it like work. You know what I mean? And big shout out to Speak Your Mind Radio, which is the, the, the affiliate that's with Speak Your Mind Records. They, um, so the way it is, is Speak Your Mind Records, when we started off Speak Your Mind Records, I wanted to start a, just a small rec independent record label that, you know, provides services such as, you know, audio engineering and also uh, producing and also uh, marketing and being able to run the, the record label the right way, you know what I mean? So, speaking of my records is still in the in the, in process right now. I, I, as an artist, I, as an audio engineer right now, I'm, I'm basically doing everything myself at the moment. But uh, me and my girlfriend, of course, are, are making sure and maintaining that everything is right so that way we can move like professionally instead of just word the mouth. You know what I mean? So in the long run for any artists who are looking for mixing and mastering services, I'm a full cell uh, university student for audio production. I've been in the game for 14 years. If you're looking for mixing and mastering services, you could definitely hit me up on Instagram, like I said, at The Real Fusion with two ends. Um, I'm willing to work with anybody, man. You know, that's the services I give for the label. And then down the line, if I see any potential going on and I start getting the paperwork and everything right for speaking my records, I'm, I'm willing to sign, you know? And also, you have done work with a female artist by the name of uh, by, by the name of Soundcheck. I have to ask you, how did yourself and her get connected? Soundcheck? Oh, man, Soundcheck hit me up <coughs> on my Facebook like page uh, a while, while back. And it was... It was three to four months in that I didn't get the chance to see that message because I, I wasn't really paying attention to the Facebook like page. I was more on Instagram. So I seen that it was four months ago from when she hit me up, and then I'm like, oh, damn. So then when I hit her back up, you know, she was a fan of my music. She said that she liked it, what I do, and so forth and everything else. And me and Soundcheck, we, bond, we bonded, like, really, really good, like, through music, like crazy. And uh, that's how we basically started making tracks. And no matter what, I have like a feature and I know there's somebody who can kill it. I, I always send it over to Soundcheck because I know she has she has the flow, she has the style to definitely kill a track. And no matter what, from everything that I've heard so far, Soundcheck has not disappointed me whatsoever. I really think she's a dope female artist. 
And also, on October 14th uh, this year, you actually released the project The Wandering Brain Volume 1. I was going to ask you, what's the story behind that amazing project? And of course, where can our listeners buy or stream themselves a copy? So, The Wandering Brain was a project put together to, to basically give the idea of what is inside my mind at all times. You get what I mean? So... Normally, a lot of people, when they listen to my music and everything else, they'll hear that it's only a boom-bap style of rap. So when people listen to my music, you'll always hear boom-bap, boom-bap, or, or some good hip-hop, or a mixture of some stuff. But you'll never hear a mixture of different genres, like here and there, from like pop or, or, or different types of beats, you know? Because when it comes to beats, I'm always one of them, uh, I'm one of the rappers that love old-school hip-hop beats you know, with a, with a slower BPM, some 90 BPMs and so forth. Um, I, I love all them boom bat beats, the scratch beats, of course, too. So when when I ended up uh, doing that, I did the Wandering Brain to put together a, 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 a compilation of different tracks and different vibes. So the Wandering Brain was just basically saying, this is what's in my mind at all times. So you'll hear different things from boom bap rap. You'll hear different thing, things from uh, the ge- uh, this generation rap. You'll hear hip hop on the track. You never had nobody ever heard me sing before, and apparently when they heard me sing, they're like, "What the hell? I didn't even know that was you." You know what I mean? So uh, the Wandering Brain. If you guys want to stream it, you can stream it on Spotify. You just type in Fusion with two ends, and you'll see me there. Uh, you'll see the Wandering Brain project up there. It's also on Apple Music if you want. You know what I mean? That's basically the only streaming service is there. And if you want to check out all my stuff, you can visit www.listentofusion.org. That's my website. And it, uh, it'll show you where all my content is. It'll, it'll take you to my link tree. You can see where my YouTube and all the other stuff is as well. And also, uh, Fusion, I have to ask you, man, like, what's next for you? Is there anything I missed during this interview? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote? We still have you here live on 97.7 at Live Radio FM. But I will say is, uh, everyone, I'm I'm working on this vlog. This vlog is like one of the biggest things I've ever done. I've never I've never thought I would ever be able to like make a vlog. I mean, I'm always big, I'm big on podcasts. I'm not camera shy whatsoever. You know what I mean? I'm I'm always very comfortable when it comes to conversations and so forth because I I know how to break ice. So uh, for anybody who wants to check me out, check me out on Instagram at the Real Fusion with two ends. That that will basically take you to where you need to go for my vlog. I'm looking for the support, the subscribers. I'm basically making these vlogs to inspire each and every single one of you guys out in the world today who are creators in the world out here doing what they have to do to make something happen. And that's the most important thing I want is to keep inspiring and keep letting people and, and, and keep giving motivation out to the world to people who really need it, you know? That's the main thing I would basically say is the vlog is like the main, main thing. And on my YouTube channel, that's where you're going to basically see the Five Perspective podcast as well, where you're going to see entrepreneurs who are small uh, business owners or small entrepreneurs who are looking for a platform to put out their name. So um, I am definitely uh, looking forward to get them interviewees in. And uh, as goes for my music, I will be dropping a single before the end of the year. Um, after that, I will be working on a lot of other projects. You'll probably hear it first here on Outlaw, on Outlaw Radio FM. Um, I will be dropping the Wandering Brain 2. And I will be working on a another project called Do You Trust Me Yet? Which is another sequel for the Trust Me I'm a Rapper uh, demo that I released. And that's pretty much it, man. And I gotta say, Fusion, just first and foremost, man, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy evening just to come on the radio station and talk about not only your hip-hop career, but your wrestling career as well, man. I look forward down the line making this happen again. Definitely, man. DJ Mortar, you already know, man. Outlaw Radio FM, number one's Canada radio station. I appreciate you, man. Hey, man, I appreciate you as well, man. Have yourself a wonderful night and most definitely stay safe out there, man. Looking forward to chopping up with you soon. Hey, you too, man. I appreciate you, brother. Take it easy. You as well, brother. All right.